prior inductee and uh, owner of one of the most uh, successful uh, programs in the country, the Gym Rat Challenge, both women and men. It's our thrill and honor to have both of you here. John. Thank you, Ray. a few weeks back and asked me if I wanted to induct my father. Uh, I, of course, said yes, but many of you in the room know my father, and his resume is pretty much in the, the program, and for those that know my father well, you know that you really can't capture the essence of the man without telling a story. So I decided the best way to do this was to tell a quick story. So, uh, and he is terrified about what I'm going to say next, just so you know, he is terrified about it. So, in uh, February of 1986, I was a sophomore at Potsdam High School playing for my father. We were ranked 11th in the state, and we had just taken our first, and what would be our only loss of the regular season, it was game day. And uh, we were about 30 minutes from the bus departing the parking lot to take us to Canton High School uh, for our away game that night. Unfortunately, I found myself in the emergency room because I had the flu and had gone home at my father's orders halfway through the school day to get some rest so I was ready for the game. When I got home, uh, oh, if you think that's funny, just hang on. So uh, when I got home, I grabbed two different kinds of cold medication, took them quickly, and went to sleep. Four hours later, I woke up without any idea of who I was, where I was, or how I got there. I was a drooling, blubbering mess. So my mother immediately took me to the emergency room. Uh, my father, who went to the high school to tell the bus to go without us, um, showed up just as the ER doc was explaining, as he was looking at the two bottles of medication, that these medications should never, ever be taken together. And he explained to my, my parents that I would, for the next 24 to 36 hours, be disoriented, I would be disconnected, I would be extremely groggy, and I was very likely to experience hallucinations. Um, my mother immediately asked if there were any permanent side effects to this. And the doctor reassured her, no, no, Mrs. K-Mack, at 24 to 36 hours, it'll get out of the system, he'll be fine. My father then asked the most important question that was on his mind, which was, can he play tonight? <laughs> The doctor turned to my father at that point and said, play what? My father responded with a little bit of a, a quick monologue about 11th in the state, Canton, blah, blah, blah. And the doctor stopped, took two steps closer to my father, and as if he was speaking to someone whose first language was not English, he said slower and louder, disoriented, disconnected, groggy, and hallucinations. <laughs> My father at that point gave the universal signal for yes, I understand. We left the, um, the ER, and as soon as we got out into the crisp 12 below zero Potsdam air, my father immediately turned to me and said, you can play, right? You can go. <laughs> Now, in my father's mind, that was a rhetorical question, so no response was needed from me. No, to be honest with you, nor was I in any condition to give a response. My face was still numb, and I felt as if I was stuck in a jello mold trying to get my way out of it. So we immediately entered his 1979 Chevy Nova with very questionable brakes, and we began the 10-mile ride to Canton High School. My father immediately got into pregame mode. So he was talking about how, reminding me on a made field goal, we're gonna go full man-to-man -man pressure back to half court man. Made free throw, we're gonna go one, two, one, one zone press back to one throw. That went on for about five minutes until he realized that 30 seconds into that, I was back in La La Land and out like a light. <laughs> the only thing that brought that to his attention was the fact that he took a sharp left-hand turn and I landed on him while I was asleep and drooled a little bit on a suit coat. So he hit me with a real quick elbow to the solo plexus, woke me up, and then I think he started to realize, wow, this, you know, my son's condition might be a little more serious than I think. We might need some more serious intervention. 
So he took a second to think, and then he ordered me to roll down the window <laughs> and stick my head out. I said minus 12, so the window is down, okay? My head is out. I ride the last five miles to Canton High School like a golden retriever out for a summer ride. The only problem is, as my drool is coming off my face, it is freezing to my chin, okay? So we arrive at Canton High School. I have a half-inch thick ice beer going as we walk into the gym. I did manage to play that night under the effects of the cold medication cocktail and what I'm certain was early onset frostbite. Um, and it's a good thing my father's instincts were correct and my services were available. Stay back, stay back. <laughs> my services were available to the team because we barely eked out a victory over Canton High by 47. <laughs> Now, anybody that's played for my father, either at Potsdam State or Potsdam High School, has stories like this about his competitive intensity. Um, and before I hand it over to him, I do want to say that my friend Derek Rowland, who during his All-American career at Potsdam State played for my father, called me this week and said, yeah, I know there's stories to tell. And it's hard to find one you can sell a mixed company, but I did it, okay? Um, and, uh, but you've got to talk about how your father taught us how to win. He taught us how to win. And Derek said he had this formula, and he was tenacious about making sure that we followed that formula. And Derek was right. He did know how to win. He was a part of uh, one of what I consider to be college basketball's greatest dynasties at Potsdam State under Coach Jerry Welsh. We can, we can applaud for that. Um, at the national championship in 1981. Then he took over a hapless program at Potsdam High School, who in its history had never won a sectional championship, had gone 40 years without a league championship, and had managed to lose 27 games in a row in the two seasons before he took over. During his 18 years, Potsdam won 14 league titles, 11 sectional championships, made three Final Four appearances, and one state championship game appearance. But to close, more importantly than the fact that we won was how he taught us to win. And that was by being accountable to each other, to our teammates. If you played for him and you were a starter, you better appreciate the guys at the end of the bench that were busting their tails every day in practice and didn't get the glory of playing in the game. You better understand that you're not just part of a team, you're part of a program. So you're accountable not only to your current teammates, but those that came before and those that will come after. And you better be willing to sacrifice for your teammates because anything you accomplish individually will pale in comparison to what you accomplish as a group because champions or championships are for everybody in the program and champions walk together forever. And because of his work, there are many of us at Potsdam High and Potsdam State that still walk together now. So with that, I'd like to welcome Steve King back from the United Steve Kamak, I'm from Tupper Lake, New York. I live most of my adult life in Potsdam, and uh, I was hoping I'd really go close to last Rennie so there wouldn't be a lot of people here, but uh, I'm here now and I'm the best I can. Uh, first person I want to talk about is Jerry Welch. I'm going to tell you how I met Jerry Welch. I was uh, a in my early 20s, I go up to the press box and watch his practices and take notes because I wanted to coach. Because I always believe coaching basketball is one thing that a person could do to affect the outcome of a game more than any other sport. And I was very an average player, but I loved the game. And I go up and take notes every day. And he, I would see him look up. He had no idea who I was. But he'd look up, nod his head. And uh, I keep on taking my notes. About two or three weeks into the practices, uh, his assistant coach, Frank Romano, a great Hall of Famer from Potsdam, had to leave on a family emergency, as well as another assistant. And he was by himself. And 
was about to start practice, he looked up and he waved, and I looked behind me to see if there was somebody else behind me. He was waving to me to come down. So I went down, this is a true story. I went down and he said, you've been up there for three weeks, you understand what I'm doing? And I said, yeah. He said, listen, I'm by myself, you wanna help me until my assistants come back? I said, sure. He said, got any questions? I said, the only problem I have, when you run your out of bounds plays, 24, 48, 98, 62, they all seem the same to me. He said, okay, you're good, because they all are the same. <laughs> I said, great. So I, that's how I started my career with Jerry Wells. Uh, when the assistants came back, I was towards the end of the bench, but every day we would talk about a game of practice, and there was about a month into that season, he said before a big game, Steve, uh, we're gonna switch things up. For good luck in this game, Steve's gonna sit next to me, and he moved the other assistant coaches down a nod, and there I stayed for 10 years, next to Jerry Welch. And uh, he was a great coach. It didn't come easy for me. I worked very hard as a coach. When I had a breakdown tape, I would take it, and I would take it into a room, and I would put it in a recorder, and I'd watch it in slow motion. So I got everything down, the out-of-bounds plays, the signals, what they, every set they ran and how they did it, I broke it down and I handed it to them every time they asked me to do it. And anybody that says coaching is easy, they're wrong. It's not. The trips to scout, it's not like it is today. You get everything digitally off the internet. We had, I had to go in a car and travel. We had trouble with Utica College for some reason. Go to Utica College. I was a teacher. I get up at 6 o'clock in the morning, go to school, get ready, come back, get a state car, get on the road, go to Utica College during a snowstorm, scout the game, wait about 40 minutes after the game, make sure everything worked, drive back, a blizzard. I drove back with the windows down to snow flying in to stay awake. You know, that's what we did to be successful. And a lot of you here that are being inducted as coaches understand what I say because you prepare better than everybody else. I don't want anybody else to prepare more than, than I could prepare. We cared more. And we did what we had to do to win. And Jerry Welch taught me the importance of preparation as I started my career. Now, I roomed with him early on. And this is another true story. We lost a tough game to Union on a last second shot by a guy named Joe Cardinane from Plattsburgh. Yeah, he hit a shot that, that beat us by one and Jerry was beside himself. And that night it was a full moon. At one o'clock in the morning, I used to love to watch the honeymooners. And I remembered the black and white every night and then there was a door that he opened up and an ironing board would come down. And back up, down. Well, at one o'clock in the morning, Jerry, all of a sudden, popped up like somebody injected starch into him. And he said, oh, I'll never forget this, I can't believe we lost that game. And then down he went. I said, geez, he really's taking this hard. About an hour later, it happened again. There he did, he came up and he said this, I'll never let this happen again. I'll never let this happen again. And I said to myself, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna help him out? He thinks he's not gonna lose again. Who do I see? I went over and he stayed up. I went over and I, he was sleeping with his head down up and I gently put him back down. I was beside myself. I'm gonna tell you what happened. He went on and won 60 games in a row. I'm saying, this guy's something else. He was a special guy. He was the, the hub of the wheel. We were all spokes on that wheel. And he made Potsdam into a national power. And he taught me what was important to become successful as a coach. And I always appreciate it. Now, he's called me 15 times, five times today. He said, I got your tie. I got Teddy to talk. Teddy, you got those calls, I know you did. Maroon, 
Maroon is probably the same as color. Did Timmy, the son of 12 minutes from me in Rhode Island, did Timmy give you the pie yet? I said, no. I called him, I called him. Timmy came, went over, I got a tie from him, I think he just took it out of his closet. <laughs> you know, it was purple and pink, you know? And uh, he just wanted to be here so much so, but he just couldn't make it. You know, his health is dwindling, and he, and he, and he wanted to be here, but he just gone. But we all loved him. Now I wanna quickly just mention some of the people that have come. The table back there, Three members of the 81 National Championship team. Derek Rowland, Mo Wood, and Junior Waverly Patrick. They all played Peter Lowe in that championship. Derek Rowland, I met him when he was a six foot four skinny freshman at Potsdam. And I remember the first day I met him, I went up and I said, you were recruited? He said, yeah. And I said to him, are you any good? And he said, yeah. And we then developed a friendship that has never died. We talk almost every week. Now he's going to be six foot five, six foot five and a half. And he was the two time first team All-American. He's the biggest folk on the bill. Because he brought us into the national limelight. And I can remember a game that he played, the national championship game, where he re-injured his calf in the semifinal game. And the trainer didn't think he was going to play in a final. But he rose to the occasion, walked on the floor limping, just like Willis Reed did in that big game. He scored 26 points and led us to a national championship. That's the type of guy he was. He went on to play professionally for a while in the NBA. Had a great career overseas, played for the Albany Patroons, went as a practice player, and then became the all-time leading scorer and rebounder in Patroon history. And a great member of this community, he's done a lot for it as a coach of the Patroons, and he is now just taking the job with the team in Oklahoma, a new team in the TBA, and he's going to be a great asset to him. We're going to miss him here in Albany. I want to thank my son for the great introduction. You know. He played for me. It's not easy playing for your father, but it was easy to have him as a, as a player because he did everything you wanted him to do and he did it the right way. And he was the first out of court and last to leave. He had a great career at Plasper and I love the introduction. Thanks, Johnny. Friends, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Enjoy your food. I'm done. Thank you very much. Uh, Steve, uh, play John, play that night. He said, of course, I did. So, that's a great story.